Okay. Uh, good. I should be recording now. Okay. So I'm assuming everybody's here. If you know somebody is still coming, I can wait a few mi more minutes. Okay. Now I will start then. So the topic of today's lecture is about uh, state value uh, evaluation. So we will not try to find the optimal policy, but we will just have a policy and we want to evaluate uh, its value uh, in the model three case. Uh, so up, up until now, we always knew everything about the model. Then we, we, we knew the model, but we didn't know the, uh, the, the state. Now we will see that we will know uh, absolutely nothing about the model. Uh, the lecture will be divided in two, roughly speaking. Uh, of, of course, of course, the times are a bit random as usual. Uh, the first half uh, will be about um, the, the first uh, basic methods. Uh, so essentially Monte Carlo, and then we will do uh, we will use the basic definition of value. We will we, uh, we will uh, define the Monte Carlo method, and we will see how it works. Then we will uh, switch to learning rates. We will see what, what we mean by that. Um, then we will do the temporal difference and we will try to mix Monte Carlo and temporal difference. And after the break, we will do something which is a bit more convoluted in, uh, from a mathematical part, but it's actually very simple. We will see to implement. Uh, so we will de do temporal difference lambda. And uh, we will generally speak about the eligibility traces, which are a quite common and help, uh, useful tool um, to, we will show it will help us to retain uh, some sort of short term memory of past experience when we do the update. Okay, so uh, as you've seen, I, I decided to um, to share a notebook, which is an incomplete no notebook, um, so you can follow on your own. Uh, on your own, uh, I left some part blanks, uh, and then I think that you can decide whether we can. I can give you very short uh, period of time, and you can think about how to fill those blanks, and then I can give you a solution, or we can just skip it. And, um, and, and I will provide the solution. In any case, after the lecture, everything will be um, available to you. Um, okay, so let's start. Um, okay, so as I said, the, the, um, the topic now is how to evaluate the value function. And so we are dealing with tasks in which we, we have a, a policy. Uh, but we have no idea of the underlying model uh, of the environment in which we live. Uh, but we can, of course, have some, uh, some access to it. We have access to it in, in the form of the experience. So we, have, um, we, we can produce and produce and produce trajectories, which are the, uh, just the, the set of consecutive um, state, action, and reward as the environment, uh, so the, the state is exactly the state I mean. I do an action following my policy. I get the reward, the new state, and I follow it until termination. And I can do how many trajectory I want. And this is the only information I have on the model. But we, we can see that just having this information, we can, uh, we can evaluate the value. Indeed, the value function of the, of, the, of the policy, so the value function of the state given a policy, has the proper definition, which is just the expected return when I start in that state and I follow the policy uh, from that point on onward. So this is the first definition of the value, of the value uh, V given a policy pi of the state X, it's the expected uh, the expected um, sum from all consecutive times of a discounted reward, so gamma to t, uh, t uh, reward in t, 
if I start exactly in that in, at time zero in that position uh, S. And this expectation pi, it means that all the action has to be taken with a probability given by my policy. And we will see that this is an already enough to have, a, um, to have our first class of algorithms, and this, uh, which will be uh, called Monte Carlo evaluation. The second part we will deal with uh, temporal uh, difference will exploit the fact that we also have a recursive property of a value function, uh, which, which says something different. I and mean, you have seen it uh, in the lecture two lectures ago uh, with uh, Professor Celani, which is the value is the expected value um, of the sum of the immediate reward plus the discounted value of a successive. Uh, in the successive state. Again, if you start in the in the right state and you follow it by policy, so you see that the first uh, definition is just needs the returns. If you know the returns, you can cal calculate it. The second one, you need the to know the value in the next state to to measure it. So it, it there will be two different ways to deal with the two definitions. Okay, we want to, we want to try the methods I'm, I'm going to describe and, and that you've seen in the, in the theory class uh, on an extremely simple model. And this model is just a random walk. Uh, what we mean by a random walk model, we mean that the environment is just uh, a string of, of states. Uh, now here they are called A, B, C, D, E. We will call with numbers starting from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, you can have two, in every state you have two actions, just go left and go right. And these actions do what they, 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 they say. So if you take action left, you always go left. If you take action right, you always go right. There are no rewards at all, except for uh, when you, you, you are in the last state and you do a right action, you get a reward of one. And if you end up either in this square here or in this square here, the episode terminates. So these are a terminal state of a random walk. Um, OK, this is the environment. We, we want to do a random walk, uh, which, is, um, which means that we are taking a special policy, uh, of course. If we want to study the random work, uh, what policy should we uh, should we take? So, small question for you all. Just to start you off, what is what is the random work? Uh, the basic random work. I can I, I can I can choose one of you and ask you to maybe maybe you can just. Is it one half? Perfect. Yes, it's one half, one half. Okay, good. So it's just this is the policy which says, okay, I have one half, one half. I can go left, go right. I have no bias. Good. So we will try to evaluate the policy of going half the time left, half the time right everywhere. So the policy is the same in every state. And I want to know the value of each point. And we want to, we will use. Uh, algorithms to do that. But of course, this is a very simple problem. We, we, we could also know what is the optimal value before doing any uh, simulation. Because we can actually calculate the optimal value. Um, and this is, I wanted to ask you this, but we can skip it. Um, it's very simple, actually, that the fact is that for each point you have you, if you remember the Bellman equation, your value is, and now we can write 0 0.5 here and 0 0.5 here. So what is it? Essentially, the value in a state is half of the value from left, half the value from right, because the reward is always 0 except from the last part. So in all intermediate states, the value is the mean average of the two values uh, left and right except from the last, start, last place in which you have the, uh, the mean average between one, which is going right, and the value of the left part. So essentially, it's very simple. This means that 
since you're doing always the mean value of left and right, mean value of left and right, this means that this is a linear function which goes from zero to one from the pan. Uh, so the optimal value we can write in this case here, for example, it's gonna be one, one sixth, then two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, and five sixth, okay? This is the optimal value. So essentially, all we are going to do today is just to find these very simple new numbers which we already know for a very stupid system. But the way we, we will find them again is going to be the interesting part. So from the point of view of a, of a simulation, uh, I just define this, uh, this, this class here, which is the class of the, of the environment. Uh, I've defined it much more complicated than it needed to be because actually this is a way in which environments are generally uh, structured also in libraries online. So if you go to uh, open uh, IE um, libraries for environment, generally speaking, the idea of a structure in which they are uh, written is the same. So I wanted you to, to have something to, to compare. Okay, it's not exactly the same, but it has the same structure. So generally speaking, it has an initialized uh, initializer in which you just define uh, what is the, the observable space. In this case, it's very simple. Uh, we have just n states. I'm not considering the terminal state. And, and the space is just the, literally the, the array of one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to the size. The action space we have to define is just minus 1 and 1, left and right. And we just decided that we start in the beginning, in the middle. This is uh, that it's not important. Um, we, we will always find in this kind of libraries with real environment, we will also find a reset function, which just brings everything to back to the start. And then we will always find a step uh, function, which takes just the action. Uh, so in this case, it will take just minus one on one, will create the new state, will create the new reward, and will give uh, the new state, the reward, and a flag which says, I've reached termination of the episode, or I didn't. In this case, it's very simple. The current state will be uh, incremented by the action, so it will either minus one or one. And then I, I will just check whether the done condition is satisfied. In our case, you remember the condition was if you go to here, so if you go to minus one, or if you go to n plus one, okay? And this is what it's written here. So if you, um, if you either you go uh, to, to minus one or you go to plus one, uh, and, and if you go to, to plus one, um, the reward is going to be one, um, and you're done. If you go to minus one, the reward is zero, and you're done. And uh, in all other cases, the reward is zero, and uh, and you are not done. So the, the flag is false. Okay, just to to know, to point out that generally speaking, uh, all these libraries online, you will find a render, uh, which just helps. When you use this function, it will pop up some picture of the, of the state of the system. I didn't put it here because it was simple, but just this, this is the way a general environment is uh, created in most of the libraries you can find online. Okay, uh, let's try it out. So I just create this random walk environment and I'm doing five episodes. I start saying, okay, um, I'm checking whether the series uh, the is finished, and I just take the, the current state. I take an action randomly with this policy. I'm I'm giving the action to the step function, so I will get the new state, the new reward, and whether the episode is done or not. And I'm just printing it. Okay, this is just to check if everything is working. And this is are the typical uh, episode. So this is an entire episode. You see it not done, not done, not done until it's done. And I have the state, I have the action which I took, which was minus one. Uh, indeed, my new state is one because I was two minus one, one, and I got no reward, and I got no reward. And then it's, you see, it ends because the new, 
the final state is minus one, so it has left on the, uh, on the left. This means that it's done, it's zero the one. Okay. This is all the information our different algorithms will have access to. So instead of having, uh, like we did with dynamic programming, which you have the proper, proper uh, uh, probabilities, the function of the reward, the transition, no, this is all you have to evaluate the value function. We will have to create algorithms which take this list of numbers and create the evaluation of the value function. Okay, the first algorithm. So, as always, if you have question, please ask at any point. Okay, the first algorithm is the estimation by Monte Carlo, which does basically what it's written here in this in this function. I see the mic. Um, okay, essentially, we just we want to collect uh, we want to collect the values of this return, and we want to average them out. This is what this uh, this definition means. So the idea is that the, uh, the agent interacts with the environment and produces many 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 trajectories. From the trajectory, I can calculate the returns at each time. So if I get a trajectory from T0 to, to the termination, I just sum over all the discounted reward, and this is my return for that time there. And then I associate it, associate, I, I link the return of that time with the state at that time, okay? So I, for each state, I have, I have all the returns which have really started in that state there. This is going to be called the first visit Monte Carlo uh, method because since I want all the, uh, in this average, I want all terms to be completely independent. In one trajectory, I will take only the first time I visit the state. I will calculate the return for the first time and I will only keep that one. So for each trajectory, the first time I find I found the state, I'm calculating the return from that for from that point onwards, and I will associate the state with that reward return. Okay. Uh, then I will have to keep in memory all the returns which I, I linked to that state, and the values are not nothing more, more than just the average of that. So the value will be the average of all the returns I've experienced starting from that state, okay? The pseudocode is practically the same as the code. I want a policy to be evaluated, which is my half, half left and right. I initialize the values arbitrarily. I will just initialize by the, them to zero. I will have a list of returns which are dedicated zero, which means I have not, not visited anything yet. And then for each episode, I'm gonna start from the beginning, I'm gonna sweep up to the end, and then I will calculate the returns for each time step. And then if it's the first time I've seen that state, I will just say, okay, let's append to that list of that state, the return I've just saw. Okay, have you a question about this? This is just a very, very, very helpful tool which computes the discounted sum. So uh, this is just a function which does, uh, it, it, was, it was written magic for computing discounted even when I found, that I found it. it just, sorry, sorry. Yes. please, can you re-explain the last step of the algorithm? Okay, sure. So um, we want to we want to, to evaluate this, 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 uh, this function here, right? We want to do this formula, which is the, the expected value. So in a sense, the average value of all the sum from that, uh, from one moment onwards of the discounted reward, if you start from a state. So what you do here in, in this pseudo code is you calculate the uh, return, which means the sum of all the future discounted reward 
from that point onwards, and you calculate for each point of your trajectory. And then, if you are in a state ST, which you have not seen before, so it did not appear in the state before, you take that value of return, which is the sum of, uh, from that point, gamma uh, reward, first reward, gamma second reward, gamma squared, third reward, etc., etc. You take that reward and you store in a list which is connected to that uh, state. For example, I do the first trajectory and I calculate that the, uh, the state zero, I found it, and the return from that was three. Then I do another trajectory and the state zero, I found the reward of five. So I will keep in a memory three, five, I do another trajectory and I never find the state zero. Okay, I do another trajectory and I found again five. And then at the end, I will have in memory associated to the state zero, a list of values, which are the different returns, which I found in the different trajectories. Three, five, five, then six, one, and then I know that the value is just the average of those values or those numbers I found. It. Is it more clear? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Uh, you, I mean, thank you for the question. Okay, so exactly as, as, as said, this is the pseudocode. Now we're going to the code. Uh, again, we define a class which is just our algorithm and it just needs to know uh, what is the system size what is the gamma we want to use for the discount and now i'm just doing a list uh, of empty arrays and and i want one empty array for each uh, state so i want this list which if i have a size equal five i will have five zero array then the update at the end of a trajectory i will require from from the user i will require what is the trajectory of the states and what is the trajectory of the rewards and then what is my uh, my single uh, episode update i will just say okay at, i will at the beginning of the, of the episode for sure you have not visited any any state yet because you have not done anything then you calculate the returns. And this is a function which returns the uh, for all time step the cumulative sum afterwards. So it's the truly the, the now we have a, an array with all the returns. So we have G0, G1, G2, G3, G4, etc., etc. And then we just have to do the, the last part of the of the algorithm, which is for all the time step. So this is the time step, S it will be the visited state. And then we just want to do what? We just want to append to the list of the returns of that state, that return, if we have not visited that state. Okay, so I will, I will, I will leave you like, 40 seconds, you don't need to write it because I will give you, but I want you to think of what, what here the code should be, okay? And if you have no idea, then you can ask me and, and you will see that maybe this will, will, will be helpful for you to, to have a mnemonic uh, idea of what we are doing. Okay. Have you thought what, what goes? Are you completely lost? If you're completely lost, it's good in the sense that you can ask questions. Otherwise, I can show you the solution.
I go on, right? I mean, those few with with uh, with come on, please note sometimes. Okay, what I said, you what you need to do is if you've not seen the state yet, you should store in memory the return connected to that step. This is what exactly what goes here. If the state S was not in the visited uh, list, then for that state S, you should append, so add to the list, the return coming from that step, because this is exactly what is sum from zero to infinity gamma reward, okay? I'm just storing a new one. I found a new times, I started a new one. And then I was just saying, okay, you know what? I have visited this state. So the visited list now contains also the new state. If the visited, uh, if the length of the visited uh, list is the same as my size, it's, I do not need to go farther because I know that I saw everything, okay? This is Monte Carlo first visit. Every time you see a new state, you, rec you, you store the return. And then it's very simple. I just need to estimate the value. I have the store of all the returns I, I saw. I do, I do the average value, and this is my, my number. I go. Okay? Perfect. So, what is there are two problems with this algorithm. The first problem is that it needs to reach the end of an episode to make a guess. So if you, you, you cannot do it at half an episode, you need end of an episode, which is, can be very costly. The second thing is that it needs to store in memory all the returns. So you can imagine that here we can, but if you have a system which you have to store, start to store like millions of numbers, it gets really uh, uncomfortable. So for this uh, uh, case, we go into the learning rate. Uh, essentially, Instead of storing the returns and then you do the average of returns, you do this, which is the, like a, a stochastic way to do that. So I do the same thing, basically, but then instead of, of just uh, storing the return, I do an update. An update, it, is, it means that whenever, whenever I find the state, I say, okay, my last, approximation of the value was V. And now I will add a small quantity alpha multiplied by the return which I found minus the value. So since the return is what I expect in the end to average out as the value, this G minus V goes in direction which at the end will should, should bring me to the uh, good, good part, okay? So I will do an update now I do not need to store whenever I got a, a, a return. I would just say, okay, the new value is the value plus a small difference between the difference uh, between the return I got and the value. Okay. And you can see that if alpha was one, it means that basically every time your value is, is assigned to the, to the return I've just saw. It's like, okay, I will forget my past. This is my new return, this is my new value. If alpha is smaller than one, it mixes up all the returns I found so far. Okay. And as before, I have uh, a small uh, code, which is again very simple because it's as before. Now I don't even care about visiting it because the first visiting was about independent uh, trials. Now I'm, I'm mixing everything up. So, uh, what I have to do is just I have to calculate the return, which are calculated here. And for all the steps, all the, uh, the states, I just need to update my value with this small quantity alpha, the return minus the value. Okay. So you can think a second about that. But it's even simpler than before. Because for all the times, for all the steps, the only thing you need to do is sum this alpha, which I apologize, now it's called learning rate of the value, which is a very standard name in, in the library. 
multiply by the return, which is G, the return I found at that step in that state, minus the previously old value for that, for that state, okay? So the value for that particular state which I visited, it's e in that, that time step, it's, it's equal to the return for that time step minus the value which I previously thought it was the right value. Okay, good. Now let's estimate how this works. Uh, and this will be something which I will do with different algorithms. It's, it's very simple. Uh, I will do 100 episodes. I will, uh, now we can put the random policy, which was uh, those, uh, that of the random walk. I'm putting gamma equal one, just just for simplicity. So there is no discounted uh, reward. So we know that the optimal value is one fifth, two fifth, three fifth, four fifth, and six fifth. Um, I'm taking a random uh, alpha, which is mod, 0 0.05. Uh, the optimal value, we have said that now we know what they were, what they are. One sixth to Six, three, six, four, six, six. Uh, and I will create an environment, uh, and I will try to do both of the. Uh, I will create both of the algorithm, and I want to uh, to evaluate the um, how different the values measured by the algorithm are. If I do an an episode and episodes of learning. And I will average out between many, uh, many different uh, stats, okay? So this is for, for each, each, um, each algorithm, we'll have a number of episodes, all so, and, uh, and I will have to store the trajectory for each episode. I will reset the environment. I will do the episode as before, you see, uh, the action is the random action between left and right, uh, and I will get a new a new state, a new reward, and I will essentially retain in memory the trajectory for the state and the trajectory for reward. And then I will say to uh, the Monte Carlo, the two algorithms, so the Monte Carlo with the first visit and Monte Carlo with learning rate, I will give them the two trajectories, and I will say, okay, give me an evaluated of the values and then, I, since I know what, what are the, the values in, uh, in the optimal, the, what are the optimal values, what are the real values, I will just uh, check what is the error between what I got at a certain number of episodes of learning and what is the real, real one. Okay. Uh, okay I have to I apologize. I have to define this. Ah, I, yes, I, I, I always, I forget to. Okay, it will take a bit because it, I asked him to do a large number of trajectory. Okay, so this is a typical efficiency curve. You can see that the first visit Monte Carlo, it's rather robust. It goes to, to zero quite well. This is the error, so the error this is the error uh, for all the episodes. So after 100 episodes, uh, the, the average error for the first visit Monte Carlo is rather small. And you can see that the Monte Carlo with the constant learning rate actually learns quite well and then fluctuates around a bit. And this is, uh, this is re the reason why uh, you know that the, the learning rate actually should go down and there are the, the, the condition for, for the learning rate in time to, to be sure that the algorithms converge with probability one. And we are not using that. We are using a custom algorithm, which is it's known to have this problem. It will go fast toward the solution, then it fluctuates. Okay. And you can clearly see that, for example, if I have a much larger learning rate, then I will have 
even worse performing, okay? But if I have a very, so this is because uh, I'm, I'm trying to change my value much faster. So the beginning I learned very fast because I was very far from the right solution, but then it's, it's a, a mess. And if I do a very, very, very small uh, learning rate, of course, this will, in the end, will be a much, uh, much better solution, but it takes a, a very long time. Okay, so we've done the first very simple thing, which was Monte Carlo. We had a, a way to define the solution as an average, and we exploit that average. We have not used the Markovianity. We have not used the recursive property of the, of the value function. We have not used anything. Now we will do exactly that. So now we will use the property that the value can be explained as I uh, can be given as the instantaneous return plus the discounted value of the next state. Okay. And as, as you've seen, you can def define the, this, what is called the temporal difference error or TD, line, TD delta, which is the reward plus gamma, the value in the next state, minus the values in this state here. And you can see that it's defined, it's, it's taken as above. Above you have the value, reward plus gamma, the value in the next state. And here the, the, the delta is defined exactly as the reward, plus gamma value in the next state minus the values in this state. Okay. And the meaning, the, the, the reason for that is very simple, which is this delta here should go to zero because exactly as the value is the expected, uh, the expected um, uh, average of return plus gamma value, if you do re return plus gamma value minus value, the expectancy is to get zero. And the meaning of delta is actually very simple to understand because the meaning of delta is the reward plus gamma value, which is, uh, okay, let's, let's do it another way. It's the reward I got, which is the real return, which I, uh, the, the real um, reward which I experienced now. So the re reward I got now. And the other thing is, the reward which I, this V minus gamma V, oh, let's do it in the other way, okay. I apologize, one second. Um, let's do it. Sorry, here. Okay, so R, RDT is the reward I just got and the value minus gamma, the value in the next state, is the expected reward at which I should have got. Because this is clearly, since one is the value at time t and the other is gamma value of time t time plus one, this is the expected reward I should have got now. And this is what I really got now. So delta is basically the difference between what I truly experienced as the reward and what is the expected reward which I should have gotten at the time t. Okay, this is what it means uh, in, a, in, like a, in words instead of a mathematical sense. Um, again, so the, the pseudocode, uh, so what is the truly uh, nice thing about this? That this does not require a whole uh, episode because the definition of delta requires only the state at time eh, t, the reward, the action, no, the action does not, but you have to do an action, you have to get a new reward, you have to get a new state. So if you do one single step, you already can uh, evaluate delta, and then you can do this update. Okay, so Monte Carlo requires the whole trajectory of the whole episode to do one single update, and temporal difference requires only one step. And this is indeed the pseudocode. Again, you want you have a policy to be evaluated. You have this step size alpha constant very small. Uh, you start with the value which are 
uh, randomly, but the, the value for the terminal states at zero. And then essentially, whenever you do whatever episode you're doing, whenever you're doing a new an action from a state S, you have you can calculate this delta, which is the reward you really took, plus gamma, the value you think it is the new state, minus the value you think it is in that state there. This is delta. And you update the value by a small quantity by this difference here, which is the difference between what you experienced, R, and what you expected, gamma V minus V. Okay? And you do it over and over. Every step, you can do this update. Again, uh, I'm, I'm a bit late, but then you can you can see that again I created an, an algorithm class which is very simple, and you, we have a very simple uh, step update. Now, no, it's not a single episode update. You do not require the whole trajectory. You just require very simply a state, the reward, and the new state. Okay, and um, okay, you can again spend a few seconds uh, to think what is the update to right here, and it's just this line here. Okay, so let I will give you two seconds. The, the only thing which needs to be a bit uh, dealt with care. is the fact that if it's if the episode is done, then I do not have the new value because the value of all the terminal states is zero. But that is the only thing that has to be taken with care. So each state, I will calculate the value in the new state, or I will put zero if, if episode is, is finished. I will do reward plus gamma value in the new state minus the value in, in the state in which I mean, and I will update the value. And this is exactly what is done here. If I am done, so the episode is, is finished, the delta is equal to reward plus zero, because the, I am in a terminal state, minus the value I have in that state. If I'm not done, the delta is the reward plus gamma multiplied by value in the new state minus the value in the state I mean. Then I, I do just a small update. The value is, uh, I just sum this small uh, alpha, the small coefficient, which is now is 11 grade, sorry. And I will multiply by delta. So this entire temporal difference algorithm is actually essentially four lines and it's very, very simple to, to run. Okay. The whole idea of today uh, is that all these things are very simple to implement in the most basic uh, sense. Again, I just wanted to, um, let me copy this because I will need it otherwise. Okay. Uh, here is the evaluation, sure. Okay, here what I do is the same as before. So I do uh, 50 runs of averaging and I do 100 episodes. And now I compare the results I get with this temporal difference zero, which you just take every step. You see now, instead of waiting for the end of the episode, at each step, I'm, I'm saying, okay, I have a new state, new S, I have the old state S, I have a new reward R, I can ask to the, to the method of uh, temporal difference zero to do a new update of the value, okay? 
before the update was after the whole episode. Now the update is in between single steps of the episode. Okay, and you can see now uh, essentially what what happened for the for the for the system, and it very very simply it it does something which is comparable to the to the Monte Carlo. Okay. So uh, I'm running a bit late, so perhaps now we take 10 minutes of break. But if you have questions, please ask them now. And uh, the next part will deal with uh, what way to mix Monte Carlo and LGBT trade. We'll uh, pause the recording. Okay, so we are back. Uh, if any of you have got some questions, please ask. Otherwise, I will. I will want to do a quick recap. Uh, so I just want to stress basically three three small things. Uh, the first is what we've done in all this argument here so far is that we have taken we have taken something which we know should be an, an, an evaluator of, of the value for Monte Carlo. What we compare, what we assume is, is the value is the return. So in a sense, our value is the expected, uh, expected return, complete return, discounted sum to infinity. And the algorithm, so, takes account of that and takes our the return it sees and tries to average them out in order to evaluate the value. In the temporal difference, uh, what is what is the return is the return which is called sometimes G T T plus one, so which is the return given by this, the instantaneous reward reward plus gamma V. So again what we are doing is we, we are trying to uh, to make our assumption, my evaluation of the value as close as possible to what I see as R plus gamma V, okay? So in a sense, Monte Carlo takes the, re the complete return and tries to, to average the complete return to get the value. The temporal difference takes the instantaneous reward plus gamma V and that return, which is the one step return, tries to assign it to the value. And then we, we see other things. But what I want to, so this is basic idea. Also, in the future, we will see that we will take some kind of evaluation of the return, and then we will try to assign to the value. What I wanted to, to stress here, which perhaps before I was not, uh, I did not stress enough, is that this, this method what does uh, for this method to be model free? It means that they require only trajectory. Okay, so we have done this this very simple random walk environment, very simple random policy. But this works. This this small script with we we, we uh, I've shared with you works for any any environment, any policy, as long as they are table uh, action table state. So here I have an environment random walk and I have a policy which is half half, okay? But if I were to have an environment too, which is a super secret spacecraft, uh, uh, NASA, Tesla, millions of euros, and the policy is some, some strange thing which requires a million of states, I don't care. As long as I have a list of states and a list of rewards, this very simple, very basic algorithm can produce a state value, okay? Because the model inside this, uh, this algorithm R, the model does not appear anywhere except that for the size. So the, the, the learning algorithm must know how many states there are and trajectories. So what, what is really producing the trajectories the, for this uh, algorithm, it's completely irrelevant. Okay, 
So we are doing the most, the simplest random walk, uh, random policy, just because we, we want to have a benchmark. But these very few lines are extremely um, general. Okay, I just wanted to stress this. Okay, so let's move on. Um, I will do very quickly what I've just said before. So Monte Carlo, what they want to do is that they, they wait at the end of an episode so that they can evaluate the return, the complete return. Remember that the complete return is just defined as the reward, instantaneous reward plus gamma discount, the discounted reward, then the discounted reward afterwards, and et cetera, et cetera. And this, the, the, the point of Monte Carlo algorithm is that they want to update the value using the complete return. One step temporal difference, also known TD0, instead they can update every step, but they want, they, what they use is that they say, okay, we take care of the one step return, which is defined as the reward plus gamma the value, and I'm going to update my value with using only the one step return, okay? Now we can mix together the thing and we can see that there is a whole class of methods which are called n step, different temporal difference, which use the n step return. The n step is just something in between Monte Carlo and, and the temporal difference. For example, the, let's say, the n step is gt t plus n, which means that the first n steps, it takes the experienced reward. So it's the reward, instantaneous reward, plus gamma discounted reward. Again, I apologize. Then it's gamma squared r t plus two, plus, plus, plus with all the discounted. But the last step, instead of using the experience, it uses information which it has. So clearly it's between the two. What does it mean? It means that there are a whole class of algorithm in which we update the value using essentially what we have as the end step return. Okay. So as before, my new value is going to be my old value plus this learning rate, the return I just experienced minus the value I had. Okay. So the entire the entirety of these classes of algorithm essentially say what is my approximate or approximate approximate of the value can be the complete return one step return n step return i don't care my new my update is the my my old value and i will add a small part of the difference between what i've just experienced which could be a complete return one step return and return and the my previously uh, evaluation of the value. Okay, so this is very general. I will not even go into the into the into the code. You will be fine because I I mean it was just to show you that there is a very simple way to 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 care about Monte Carlo and uh, one step temporal to this. Uh, did I, did I, am I yeah. so question about this now we go Unfortunately, in a part which is a bit more technical, but the, the, I, there is some mathematics, but a very simple uh, message. So I will. I, I hope that at least the message will be can be used, and, and mathematically you can discuss. So why it's called temporal different zero zero? It, because there is a, it's actually one specific case of a whole class, which is called TD lambda, where lambda is the number between zero and one. We will see that lambda equal zero brings back temporal difference zero, and lambda equal one brings back Monte Carlo. So temporal difference lambda is very elegant because actually allows us to bridge these two concepts of Monte Carlo and temporal difference. What it does, again, it uses it defines a return, which is called the 
GT lambda, so the lambda return, which is something which, is, which includes all the returns we've seen so far. So the GT lambda takes GT T plus one, which is the, the current, the one step temporal difference return. So the return we have defined as the instantaneous reward plus a value for the next step. And it takes, it takes with, with weight one, of, one minus lambda, I don't care. But the next one, so the GT T plus two, takes with a decaying factor lambda. The GT T plus three with a gamma squared, okay? So mixes all the, the returns we have defined so far into one single return, okay? So we can write it as, as the, ah, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I, I this. Since I have two notebook, I have to correct, correct both of them. Okay, so the defined initial of this return, which is called the lambda return, is just, the summation of all the returns of one step, two step, three step, four step, five step, six step, etc., etc., weighted with a decay uh, factor lambda to n minus one. Okay. Essentially, it means that you oh, let's say you can rewrite it as you want if you wish in two terms, since after termination uh, the reward the the return is just the complete return. So all, after termination, all those terms go back into one term, which is this. So you can, this infinite sum, you can split in the sum up to termination, which is the first sum, which, which is a sum in terms in which you mix experienced reward and value function at some point. Okay, so it's a mix of experience F and uh, expected values. And a last term, which is just the last, last, um, the complete return. But this is just to, to show that if you split them like this, you can see that if you put lambda equal zero, then of course the second term dies and all the terms with gamma, uh, with lambda and uh, more than one die and only one term remains, which is g dt t plus one. So if lambda equals zero, the return is the one step return. If lambda equals one, the whole part here dies because one minus lambda goes to zero. And, and this term here is the, remains just gt, which is the complete return. So lambda is a parameter which allows us to go from zero, which is one step temporal difference, to one, which is complete Monte Carlo. So why do we want something like that? Because we have seen that, or, or also you've seen it in the, in the classes before, that temporal difference is very good because it bootstraps the information. So it does not require, it, it does not use only the experience you have in that moment, but it, it uses also the information you have accumulated before. Because it has, it, it, if you have a good notion of a value before, then you can use it uh, in this uh, in the one step return. But on the other side, Monte Carlo has a, a very good I mean, it, it, you cannot uh, you, you cannot have wrong information. You can have wrong information of the value if you, for example, if you start with a value or expectation very far from the correct one. Every time you do one step uh, temporal difference, that error will be brought into the definition. But if you do Monte Carlo, you do not require previous knowledge of anything. Everything is exactly as uh, experience, so it has no bias. Okay. But so one has a very large variance, but has no bias. This is from Monte Carlo. And the other, the other one, the temporal difference has a very low uh, variance, but they can have a huge bias. And this is temporal difference. So having a way which switches between one and the other, which is TD lambda, is a very helpful way to mix the two. Indeed, you, it, it's known that the TD lambda with an, an intermediate value of lambda works better than the two parts. Uh, 
full Monte Carlo, full temperature difference field. Okay, the problem is, as you can see, that as defined, you again require all steps. Okay, so temporal difference zero, you require only one step and you can do an update. But here you have one step update, one step return, two step return, three step return, four step return, and etc. So in this, we can see as a further forward view, so the return at time t lambda, it's given by the all the returns in the future, which is not useful because again, as Monte Carlo, you need to wait the whole episode and go back, which is a waste of time. Now, there is a way to deal with that, which deals with some way of retain, uh, retaining memory of your past uh, visits, which are, it's called eligibility tracing. Okay. So, I, I wish, I, I want to, to split the, this next part in two, two parts. One is just hand, uh, hand waving, which is, is saying that what are eligibility traces? Eligibility traces are a way in which you store information about where you were and you assign updates to instead of only the state you've just visited to all states but with a weight with changes changes uh, upon how far ago you visit the state okay so eligibility traces in a sense are a tool which we can we can think of as a as a empirical tool just i don't want to change only the state but if i have if, let's say i have experienced state zero and then I experience state one. I do not want to change only state one. I want to change also state zero because I mean, it was just before me. So whatever, if I now find the state one, it's very good. Then also state zero should be very good because I just experienced it. And in this way, um, we, we just want to see the eligibility traces as a tool of having memory of the past and changing all states with some memory of the past. And this can be a message which is independent by what I'm showing now. now. What I want to show now is that in the basic form, eligibility traces are a way to compute lambda return, which are returns in the future, without having to wait for the, fine, for the end of an episode. Okay. So keep in mind these two things. I have a way to combine Monte Carlo and temporal difference zero, which is called temporal difference lambda, which uses lambda returns, which in principle are something which has to be computed in the future. There is a way, which is called eligibility traces, to do it at each step instead of at the end of an episode. This tool, which is eligibility traces, is also used in general as a tool to have a memory of where you have just been, and this helps to increase the efficiency a lot. I hope I'm not completely lost to you, uh, you now. I will try to, to do the mathematics, and then we will uh, hopefully see what I mean. Okay, so we have said that TD Lambda aims to do this update here. Uh, I want to change my value with a small alpha so that my value is as close as possible to the reward return gamma GT lambda. Okay. And then now let's expand GT lambda. So GT lambda by definition is equal to one minus lambda the first one step GT, so instantaneous reward plus gamma V, this is return one step, plus lambda, two step return, which is real uh, R, R, real reward plus gamma R plus gamma squared, the value. Then is the three step, which it has a weight gamma squared, and it has the reward plus the reward 
plus gamma squared the, the other word plus value. And again and again, okay, so he has all the terms, all of the, these have some lambda to some power, and have many actual reward plus gamma to some power, the value. Okay, this is if I expand the return. Now, you can see that here something happens in the, let's say, right? You can see now that something happens in these columns here. Okay. Actually, these columns here are something appears over and over. So, for example, the reward of time t plus one appears all the times. So, you just can sum up all of them. And in particular, you have to sum up all of them are the weight one minus gamma, and then you have uh, one minus lambda, I'm sorry lambda uh, lambda to zero, lambda one, lambda squared, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of this here sum up. Sum up and you since the sum of infinite lambda to the n is equal to one minus one minus lambda, all of this term will containing R to time t plus one sum up exactly to R t t plus one. So all the factor uh, cancel out. Okay. The one with R t plus two are exactly the same, but they have one additional gamma and one additional lambda. So they are uh, sum up to gamma lambda R t plus two. Again, those with R t plus three sum up to gamma lambda two squared R t plus three. All with R t plus four sum up to gamma lambda to the three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and then the value you can see that the, actual, the value actually appears only once appear only once with two terms, one gamma vt minus lambda gamma vt. Okay. So actually, all of this strange thing here can be rewritten into this sum here. Okay. It's exactly as before. I just said that all the terms are sum up to just this. All the terms are t plus two are sum up to this. And then I, I took the value, which had only one, one, uh, one term, uh, gamma, lambda, gamma, n, n minus one, and minus lambda, gamma, to the n, and I just written like this. And now you can see that actually this term here corresponds to something very, very similar to my delta. Okay. This is the reward plus gamma v minus v when you have only one passage of space of state. This is state t plus one, t plus two, and I have a reward, okay? So I can use this in the sense that if I want to do an ex a change at time t, it's like I'm keeping on doing an update to this state here. So the value of state t, it's like it's I do it with weight one, I'm doing it at t equal t. We, at the next step, I'm again updating the same step, the same state. Even if I'm now in another state, I'm updating the same value of the same state, but with a decaying factor. Okay, it's like at t time t, I'm in a state and I have memory of being there. Then I move away, but I have a, a memory which decays with time of being there. Okay, because at time t plus one, I'm somewhere else, but I'm still trying to change the value of, at, at the state t with a decaying factor. Then at, 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 at time t plus two, I'm in even other place as t plus two, but I remember that I was there two times ago, and so I will st still increment that value there, but with an even smaller term. And then I will move again, but I will still try to update that value there, okay? Now, there are some subtleties all around, but the point is that eligibility traces, as a general rule, keep track of where you've been in the past and change the value, update the value of where you've been in the past with what is the current estimator delta. So you are somewhere, 
you calculate what is the delta because I was here and I did this action, I got the reward and this is my new value. So this is delta which usually, this delta here usually enters in the, in the calculation of only the value of st plus two, but instead we use the same delta which normally is being used only for st plus two, also for st, but with a very small factor, okay? Eligibility traces in the most extremely simple way are just the sum weight, which are weight for all of my states, which at the beginning are zero. Then if I go into a state, I get plus one. And if I move away from the state, I just get a, a multiplication lambda gamma. Okay, so I have weights everywhere, which are zero. Then I visit the place, it goes to one, and then it goes down. And I, I visit again, it goes plus one, and then it goes down. And at each step, instead of updating the value only for the state I am in, I updated the value everywhere with weight parallel, uh, proportional to the eligibility traces. Okay. So what I wanted to say is that all I've, we've done so far, essentially the re instantaneous reward and the standard return were used to update the value of a single state. So if at t equal three, I was in, in three, all my different evaluation of the return were used to update the value of state three, but with the eligibility traces at state, at time t equal three, I am in state three, but all the values everywhere get updated, but some more and some less, depending on how, how long ago I was there. Okay, so it's an extremely helpful tool because it connects past experience to present experience in a way which none other can do. Okay, this, this was, a, was a, why I was saying that there is a connection between eligibility traces seen as memory and eligibility traces seen as a way to implement uh, TD Lambda. Okay, I hope this was a bit clearer. The nice thing, because right up to now it seemed, it seemed that it was a, a, a mess from the point of view of uh, mathematics, the nice thing is it's extremely simple to implement eligibility traces, at least in this very simple uh, way. This is the pseudocode, which is essentially the same as before. So we initialize values arbitrarily. We initialize eligibility trace to zero because we have not visited anything yet. We start with a hit episode. I take an action. I do the action. I observe the reward. I observe the, the, the state. I'm doing the usual time different zero delta, which is R plus gamma z minus d. But, and then in that state, since I've been in that state, that state got a legibility trace plus one. And then for all the states, not the state I mean, for all the states, I do an update which is proportional to the learning rate and the eligibility trace in that space there. And then all eligibility trace for all spaces get multiplied and decay to the factor gamma lambda. And then I'm in a new place and I take another action, I, do, I collect a new reward, I collect a new state, and I do the same. I, the eligibility trace in the new state got plus one, but then all the states everywhere get updated with this simple number. Okay. There are many subtleties. So uh, backward and forward expression, as I define here, are ex perfectly equivalent only if at each time I were to use the value in the, as defined in the past, which is not true. So you see that now I was saying that I was saying that at t plus two, I this is the delta. This is not actually the delta because the delta because sorry because the delta is is actually uh, using the the value of v 
as defined in t plus two. Okay, so these two are not perfectly equivalent if I do a one one step by step update. But but most of what I said is true, and the general gist of of uh, eligibility traces is, is there. Okay. Have you? Do you have a question about this? I know this, this is a bit tricky, but I hope that the main message of memory is there. Do you have questions? You have too many questions and you don't want to start. Okay. Um, what is the nice thing? As I said, the nice thing is look at the code. The code, if, the only thing that's uh, different from before is that I need an eligibility trace, uh, an eligibility factor, the a number again between zero and one. And I need to just store a, a new vector, which has the same size as the, as the observation state. That's it. Then what is the single step update uh, is the same as before because I have to create a delta and I just need to do this very simple operation on the eligibility traces. Either the eligibility traces get plus one and then decay or they just decay. Okay. So you can think about them two seconds, but essentially what we have said and what we will see now is that you have to update the eligibility traces because I just visited the state. So one of those eligibility states will get plus one. Then I define the delta as exactly as in temporal difference zero. And then instead of updating only one state, I'm update, updating all of the state with the eligibility traces. And then I decay all of the eligibility. So in a sense, if you want, here I have a step three, which is apply update to all states proportion and then I have a fourth. Okay. Indeed. This is, I mean, as always, they, it, they are super, super simple. As a, as a, I update the eligibility trace for the current visited state, self eligibility trace in the state S plus one. I define lambda as before, and I take care that at the end of the episode, I don't have the value for the new state. Then apply the, the, the update, which is proportional to delta, is proportional to the, to the learning rate, but is proportional to the, to the eligibility trace everywhere, because now this is a vector of values and this is a vector of eligibility trace. And then, last thing, I do, I, I apply the decay factor, And if the episode is finished, then all the eligibility traces go back to three. Okay. Again, what are in general eligibility traces? We have seen them uh, like come up from this TD lambda uh, return. So this return which mixes all the one step, two step, three step returns. But actually, they can just be seen and they are generally used in many forms as the memory of a past system. So I go through my, my trajectory and it's like I'm, I'm lighting up some memory of, of where I am. And then the update, instead of being only localized on where, where the current system is located, is spread to all the places which have been recently visited. The main difference is that in Monte Carlo on time difference zero, 
where if I am in ST at time t, only the value relative to that position is modified. Okay. And it's modified in Monte Carlo for the complete return in TD0 by the uh, one step return or n step return, it doesn't matter. It's only that value there is modified. But with eligibility traces, the return approximation, which again, one step return, complete return, I don't care, modify all states with some weight. Okay. Uh, it's called eligibility because, in a sense, those are the states which are eligible, eligible to change. So they, we will see that in, in, you will see the function uh, in, in function approximation, you will not be in one state, you will be in approximation of the state. So all the state which share some feature will be changed accordingly. Okay, uh, then essentially you, we can see what is the last thing is just let's do again. We, we take a learning rate, we take a lambda, we know what is the optimal value, we calculate the empirical error, uh, we create a random walk, we do some average runs, and we do some uh, number of episodes, and we see what is the average performance of the, of the D lambda. And you can, yeah, I did not define it. Okay, so they will learn how much you uh, For example, you can see the TD lambda, okay, now the learning rate was very small, let's say, Larger. This is very, very large, so it will learn even faster. Let's take a, I mean, now, essentially, I introduced a new hyperparameter, which I can change, but essentially, the, this, this is a way to bridge temporal difference and multi Just one picture to show all the difference. Uh, with difference between, remember that TD1 is just Monte Carlo. What happens, let's, let's take just one episode. Okay. What is the change to the value of all states at the end of one episode? So I, I, I starting with all the value equal zero, I'm running up to the end of an episode, and I will try to see what are the changes which the three different algorithms do to the, to the values for the same thing. So I have the same environment around the walk. They all experience the same trajectory. Uh, but now I want to see at the end of the first episode, what is the change? What is the actual value we predicted starting from zero? And I will put uh, just 0 0.1 as learning rate for all of three, gamma equal one. Okay, and I do I do size equal 10, okay, uh, oh, size of plus three, five, it's the same as, as this one. And I'm using, so lambda equal 0 0.8, lambda zero, which is TD zero, and I'm using Monte Carlo. And actually, you see why TD lambda is very, is very nice, because actually all recently, uh, all all uh, all algorithms that I created before can be written as a TD lambda. So in a sense, I could have started from the end and, and finished in, in ten minutes. It would have been even less nice as a lecture, <laughs> I'm afraid, but it, it could have been okay. So you see that after one episode, nothing changed. Can you guess why? Yes, I cannot hear you, but I know that you wanted to say something. Please unmute. I'm, I'm sure you have the correct uh, answer. Kiran, is it right? No? <laughs> Anyone wants to guess? After one episode, all the value states zero. Remember what is the, the environment. The environment is a random walk, which has two ways of, of, of termination. 
either it terminates on the right and gets plus one, or it terminates on the left and gets zero. So by chance, the system just terminated on the left. So we had zero signal, essentially. So I had zero reward, zero everything. So I just, this is, this is just one episode can happen with there is no update. But let's do another episode which nothing happens. OK. So now I have three curves. And let me give me one second. I apologize. I, I thought I, I had done this before. Um, so that we can see which one is which. We see the frequency. Evidently, clearly, it, it, the, the single episode finished with a one. So it finished with a positive reward. And then I have three types of updates, which are rather different. So one is the temporal difference zero. Why is it like this? Sim it, there is a simple reason. The, this temporal difference zero has, can see only one step. And then it uses the previous node information. So until it has a reward, the, the information is always zero. Only one step sees a signal. It's the last step in which I get the reward plus one. So it says, OK, this state here, I saw a reward plus one. So I'm upping the information. But it ups the information only in that particular region there. So it goes up by one, up by learning factor. But all the other steps contributed to nothing. Then Monte Carlo, what he said, said that you have to keep the, re the return for all states. So all the return, since this is gamma equal one, all the return just sum all the re reward up to now. So all the rewards are equal, they are equal to one, which is the reward, the only reward you took. So all the returns, I apologize, are equal to one. So I'm just adding one multiplied by learning factor multiplied by all the times that I've been in a state. Since this is a random walk, I've been mostly around the center, and then I exited. So you can see that the prediction, since I'm adding the, using the return, which is one for all of them, the prediction is that actually the value is, in, is larger in the middle because it just I visited more, more, more time, many times um, the center region. But TD lambda, remember, it has a decaying memory. So the largest change is in the state which has been last seen. And indeed, it already shows the shape which it, it has, should be. Because the, the shape, you remember, is just one, one six, two six, three six, four six, six, six. So the shape should be linear. So time difference is, is weighted down by the fact that its previous bias was total zero. And only one, one, one uh, state changes. Monte Carlo has many changes, but they are wild. Wild because he has, it, it's, it has a very large variance. But TD lambda has a memory, and so it combines the efficiency of both. It has a good estimate at the end. Say, OK, this is where I got the reward. And it propagates back to all the states visited previously, but with a decreasing factor. So this basically are the three differences between the three algorithms. And this concludes the the lecture. I hope that some of it was uh, more clear than uh, some, some other part. And if you have, so I will provide the completed code with, it, it is also a few correction of typos, etc. You will get this, so don't worry. You can go over it. I also pointed out sometimes uh, 
I found, for example, for the legibility trace for the backward and forward, I, I found that this uh, blog, which is a part of the Sarton and Marto uh, online uh, material. I think it's very clear if you want to see it more. Uh, I've tried to be, um, so this, this random walk is the, um, the exercise 6.2 of the book. So again, there also there you can see that there is some material. Uh, I apologize that one thing which I did not do uh, is that I did not follow the convention using the lectures and Sato Martin. So uh, in the convention, the reward has a time incremented by one. I use the convention where the reward has not time incremented by one. So I, please be careful of, uh, for example, this, this here, it's consistent with my notation, but it, my notation is, uh, I mean, I just do it for convention, but actually, if you see it in your lecture, it should be R T plus one thing. But it, it's just convention. But it just please take care of it. Then take take note of it. Um, and I, I this I try I try to put as many comments as, as possible so that these arguments are simple. I want to, but they are simple if by their nature. This is this I want to assure you. And if you have questions, if you want to expand on them, then you can also write to me on Slack. Uh, let's stop. Uh